Hey guys, welcome to Griffin Knight Epic. This is a shoot 'em up that's coming out on Steam tomorrow. Well, tomorrow if you look at it on the day this video goes up. Uh, otherwise, it came out on Thursday, August 20th. It is a 2D medieval shoot 'em up with classic elements like exploration and boss battles, according to the Steam store. It's being developed and published by Cyber Rhino Studios, and I'm just going to get my uh, full disclosure out of the way here. I'm taking a look at this with a review code that I received from a third-party PR firm. As far as I know, i am never met anybody at Cyber Rhino Studios. Um, so that's where my biases lie. I didn't pay for the game, so I don't have to like it if I don't want to. Um, what else do they build on the Steam store here? They have... Little description, you play as Sir Oliver and his little Griffin Aquila, which are those two on the rock there. Old heroes, they slay the dragon, save the princess, and are now once again thrust into adventure. There are eight handcrafted levels, uh, boss weapons, so kind of like a Mega Man, and uh, there's equipment and lore. They have this pitch here for Linux support and gamepad support, which I want to say right away. Those should just be a thing. They should not have to be selling points. There's no, there's not a good reason that Linux support, Linux support shouldn't be like wide across every game now. Like if your game is coming out, it should just have Linux support. Gamepad support, I mean, it's dependent on the kind of game you're making, but for the most part, yes, gamepad support supports should also be a thing. Uh, it shouldn't be a big feature that you can list on the page. That should be a thing that's just there for everybody. Uh, there's also shops with upgrades, the ability to flip around, to shoot behind you, and going up and down. Um, so let's get into it, but first I want to take a look and show off the options here. We've got language select, you can have English. Uh, I want to say that's Brazilian. That looks like Brazilian. Again, that one, I have no idea. Because I don't really know. Oh, actually, this is Spanish, isn't it? Yes is C. Huh. Well, now I've learned what yes is in Brazil. I'm pretty sure that's Brazil. It looks like a planet. Um, anyway, and then windowed video resolution, which goes all the way up to 2560 by 1440, which is pretty impressive. Uh, with a minimum of 800 by 450. Uh, I've got it at that. Music volume, I've got it at 50. Controls, you can configure your gamepad or joystick. There's a fair amount of controls to mess with. Um, I'm going to actually play with keyboard and no mouse, because it doesn't use the keyboard. Just because I, for some reason, feel more comfortable using a, key a keyboard for this. Get a sweet gift from Screech. Uh, I played for about a half hour before starting the video, and then this was a previous take where everything fell apart. So, um, I'm skipping the tutorial here because I don't think it's super necessary to show off. Um, what do we got? We got a market. This is just the hub menu where you select your level, a la Mega Man. I think I made the comparison earlier. Got healing potions, energy potions, bombs, and vulnerability potions, squire energy potions, berserk potion, strength potion, donation potion, and then by default, when you get to this menu for the first time, you can only buy these two things. You can't buy any of the potions or any of these other squires, and you won't have the money for it anyway. Um, Ugly Duckling Squire. I want to believe that there's some sweet easter egg that that's going to turn into like the best squire if you use it a bunch, but I don't think it's true. And then if you go to the wizard shop, you can buy upgrades for your weapons. Right now we only have a crossbow because that's what you start with. And I've already got the second upgrade, which when you get through the tutorial, it puts you in here for the first time. The only thing you can get is the crossbuster upgrade for 50 gold, which you'll have enough. Um... And then there you go. That's stuff you can mess around with between levels. Um, and then there's also a companion I want to show off here where you can get different little lore. It takes a while to load for some strange reason. Uh, but it's just a book of... You can see all the characters. And it loads into that. There's a lot of loading for... Oh, maybe I hit the return. Well, uh, you can show off all different story bits in there. So, at the beginning you only have two levels. Um, they say there's eight levels on the Steam page, so my guess is that tower to our left, the fortress to our north, the church right beside us here, that pirate ship in the corner, that temple down in the bottom right, that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then I'm guessing 
a la Mega Man, the one in the middle will open up as the final level. Um, that's my guess as to eight levels. Um, so, yeah, I played this for about a half hour. I've done both of these levels, like, twice each. After game overing the bosses both times, I have to say that while this game may look... Like, I, I kind of got the impression it looked kind of like a mobile game. Um, I don't think that anymore. I don't know why I had that impression as a first impression, but it looked... It looked easier than it is. Let's let's put it that way. You've got three difficulties. Squire, you get more gem drops, more hit points. The stage is easier, but you get less money. Epic has the opposite of that. You get no healing gems, less hit points, fewer checkpoints, but way more money. I've been playing on Knight, the standard. Maybe I shouldn't be. Maybe I should be playing on Beginner. Um, you started up here. And this is the one I did first, so... Uh, and I've got to remember my controls here. Ooh, there we go. Okay. Alright, I'm just gonna knock them into the shield then, I guess. So, you shoot, at least with the keyboard controls, you move with the arrow keys, and you shoot with, uh, X. Z flips your screen back around. C is for your charge shot for your crossbuster, which I don't need to use right now, I don't think. Ah, shoot. Um... The important things to note is that the hitbox is not the whole sprite, it is simply the knight on the griffin and not the griffin. The griffin itself never takes damage, it's just the knight that takes the damage. Um, when I played through for my like first half hour just to play around with it, I took the other beginning squire, the dragon that shoots for you. And I'm noticing off the bat that if you are not as good as shmups as I am, that the shield one is way better. Alright, this is where this level gets, starts to get hard. So here we have... Oops. Oh, shoot. And then we're gonna come out of here, and I need to come around here. Oh, jeez. Okay. There we go. Now we can go down. So... I have played Shmups before. Um, I played a bunch of the Tohos. I can't remember how many or which ones. Oh, jeez. And now it's all falling apart. I don't have a shield. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Um, I played a bunch of Tohos. I played Ikaruga a bunch when I was a kid. I know there's another Shmup that I played a ton of. Oops. It was back at the beginning now? Yeah, okay. Um, for some reason, I can't remember what the other one is. And I thought, going into Griffin Knight Epic, that this would be super easy and I would just breeze through because it, it looks... I don't know, it's the, maybe it's the pixel art aesthetic or the... The fact that the Griffin looks like it takes up a way more of the screen than I think it should. It just looks... I guess indie is the best way I can put it. It looks... Wait, I guess Toho is indie, but it's like... Toho's got a lot more going on. Maybe it's because it's a bullet hell and not just a shoot 'em up. As far as shoot 'em ups go, it's pretty tame. I mean, I'm rarely getting shot back myself. Um, it's more about dodging the enemies, which I can't seem to do at all. And I think I, the reason I'm having trouble with it is because of the, the hitboxes. You see there, I just dodge down. Um, I feel like you don't get to go to the bottom of the screen enough. That's one gripe I've got right off the bat here. Um, ooh, come on. Small bit of concentrating. Ah, shoot. And you'll see there. I, oh my god, I did it again. A lot of the times I find myself dodging for the griffin and not for the knight. Which I think is where a lot of my hits are coming from here. Is that I need to dodge up more. Instead of dodging down. I'll see a shot coming at the griffin, and I will dodge down to get past it when I need to dodge up so that it goes under my griffin. Um, which I think is just my being bad at shoot em ups. Um, another gripe I have is I feel like I should be able to go down lower, especially on this section, because at this point, if I go down any lower, I could actually dodge the shots so they wouldn't hit all over. But I can't go down any lower, so they have to get the griffin. Additionally, I feel like some enemy placements are kind of really difficult, like that plant is in a position where if I'm trying to deal with the kobold underneath it, I don't have time to deal with the plant before the level is scrolled past it. 
and now I'm not shooting. And now I've lost my shield. Alright, so we get it from up here, and then to hit that plant, I have to let the other plant hit, which is really frustrating. Um, that's one of those awful enemy placements that I'm not a huge fan of. This tunnel, I feel like, is too crowded, and maybe that's the difficulty spike they're going for as devs, but I feel like it's too crowded to move around without taking damage in. Um, and I think we go... yeah, there's more guys down here. That guy before he throws the spear, I missed. Ah, shoot. Thought I could go just far enough down. Um, I will say the shield guy working out way better than the dragon one did. Um, okay. We're just gonna walk away from that. This is another problem I have is when you turn around, unless you're in an auto scrolling sec, well, actually, even in an auto scrolling section. Unless it's scrolling the direction you're in, like if it's scrolling vertically, you're fine. If it's not, and it's scrolling horizontally like this, and you turn around to hit something you pass, you start scrolling the level the other way, which makes sense on the one hand, um, but I feel like it's really frustrating to play with it scrolling the other way, because a lot of the times I want it to keep scrolling the way I'm going, I want to progress. There's no reason I want to go back, but I want to be able to hit that guy behind me that I missed. And yet, I can't. If I miss a guy and I want to turn around to shoot him, I've got to start going back, and it's... Oh, God. Okay. And it's it's really frustrating. I really don't like that it... when you flip around, that it turns the scrolling back, too. Um, but, I mean, that's just a personal gripe. Um, the hitboxes, again, I think are really weird. I know that's how hitboxes in Shmup should work. That the Griffin should not be part of the hitbox. I know in Toho they've got the hitboxes like a pixel in the center. But, here's our boss. Not a tree. Tree beard. Oh, true stash. That's what it was. Uh, well, my friend, he's very angry. What happened to you? Oh, sorry, brr, fungal. Alright, this guy is also super hard. So, if you are up here, he will shoot you. By punching across the screen and then turning the spikes. If you're down here, you get hit by the roots. So there is basically nowhere you can stand that's actually safe, and you just have to hit these funguses. Uh, I'm doing a surprisingly good job of not being hit, and now this happens, so now I get all messed up. And then, see, the boss battles, the flipping around works, but I, it takes me a minute to reorient my brain for having to flip around. Um, and then, having to dodge at the top, at the bottom, and in front of me is... Oh, it's too much for my brain to handle. But we'll try one more time, because it does... We have another life, and it'll start us right at the boss battle. We won't have to do the level before it, I'm pretty sure. Yes, we start right at the boss fight. Skip the boss fight talk. Boom. Okay. Down. I mean, I've done this boss like... This is my third time trying to fight this boss with at least two lives, so... And now I have shields. Which, I think the shield is definitely the right guy to pick your first time through. If you're not super familiar with shoot ups Those I use my shield for no good reason. Going to the top, which is a huge boom. Now we can focus on dodging at the bottom here. Okay. Sorry if I don't have a whole lot to say while trying to concentrate on not lose. It'd be really cool if I could actually show off what happened when you, uh, when you beat a boss. Gotten closer than this and lost, so. Ah, shit. I really like the new shield. Come on, there we go. Oh, man, I did it. Okay. Of course, the curse of recording videos on camera is it will always be the opposite of how it goes in your practice. So, the tree stash thanks us. You're asking where your friends are. 
Uh, so I'm going the other way around. You get infected by accident. I'm sure there's a misunderstanding. He rolls over them. Sorry, but I have to see it with my own eyes. Fair enough, he's at the end of the village behind me. So this is all blind to me. Um, is there more level? Because I don't know if I can survive more level. Oh shit, there is. Well, okay, so apparently the levels are more than they appear on the opening screen. So expect me to- oh, actually we got refilled on lives, that's sweet. Okay. Trying to figure out- trying to sight read this, and it's not going well. Okay. That guy. Stay down here. Ah, shoot. Okay. Sweet! Got another shield. Uh, I probably want to hit that. Oh, there are five switches. Ah, uh, jeez, did I miss some? Oh, okay. Oh, sweet. Jim? Yeah. Alright, we're gonna go this way. This way. There we go. So it looks like we have to hit five switches to open the way down. I'm gonna try and heal. Um, you'll see that we actually do get the money regardless of whether or not we pass a level. Ah, I'm dead now. That's so good for helping people I die. Uh, okay, I'm going to switch out and go show off the other level instead. Because... I'm not confident that I can beat that. That looks like a lot of things going on, and I don't really know where it goes. So the other thing I will show off is now you can go back in the market and you'll see we have 879 gold that we kept from Tree Man. Uh, when I was playing through off camera, I lost, I got game overs on the tree and game overs on the other first boss you can do, and you kept your money for when you gain over it, so you can actually, like, progress in the game, despite being bad at shoot 'em ups which, on the one hand, I like because I need it, on the other hand, it feels really, I don't know, cheap. Um, I feel like the first thing to do is get the Dwarf Squire and increase your money earnings. If that's, if that's what you have to do, where you have to lose a bunch to progress, I feel like the Dwarf Squire is going to be your go-to guy here. Get him, get your money. Uh, I guess I could probably just hit set or something and go back there. But um, The Wizard Shop just has the upgrade I've already shown. This level I also did to the first boss. I guess there's going to be a second half to the level. Um, it's a desert level. The first boss was... I can't remember now. It was hard. About as hard as the tree, I guess. Because I think I felt like that one was easier. But apparently the tree wasn't that bad that I could actually just do it. Um, some other things to talk about. Let's see... Uh, yes, it, I feel like it's, it's pretty challenging on the normal difficulty, so if you're looking for a challenging shoot 'em up with a really fun and interesting flavor and aesthetic, Gryphonite Epic has you covered, it, it's definitely difficult. Um, the fact that the hard mode is no healing gem drops, less hit points, and fewer checkpoints, even though I think there's only one checkpoint before the boss, outside of the boss itself. So I guess there's a mid-level checkpoint, the boss checkpoint, and then you go into the next level. I'm thinking fewer checkpoints is there's no mid-level checkpoint. There's only start of level boss. Um, and you get more money, which helps you if you actually can are in the position that you have to just struggle for upgrades, but I don't think struggling for upgrades will really help you that much. I guess you can stock up on potions, maybe? Um, no, super challenging, which I think if you're the kind of person that wants to play shoot 'em up you want a certain level of challenge, and I feel like Griffin Knight Epic definitely meets that. Um, the hitboxes, I think, are a little weird. I know that's how they should work. 
Um, but again, I often find myself dodging for the Griffin and not for Sir Oliver, so I'll dodge a shot coming at the Griffin's head by going down, and boom, hits me in the head. And I can't really complain a whole lot about that, because I know that's how hitboxes should work in shoot 'em ups They should be smaller than your sprite. At least I know that's how they are in Toho. Um, I feel like in Ikaruga it, didn't, it wasn't like that, that you had a hitbox of the ship, but I could be wrong. Um, there's a lot of stages, I think I talked about in the, underneath the waterfall, where I feel like I should be able to go lower down, and there were some cases where I feel like I should be able to go higher up, but I'm guessing that those locks were intentional, I just feel like in that case the kobolds should be positioned, or the enemies, because I don't think it was the kobolds that were their projectiles are the problem, but the enemies should be placed at different levels. Um, so, the... I think it was the spiders that were shooting me in that waterfall tunnel. I feel like they should be raised... They should have a higher height that they come down to, so that the shots aren't guaranteed to hit me in the face. Um, because it makes it difficult to shoot the kobolds on the floor level and dodge the shots at the same time. Maybe that's intentional, I, there are parts of the level design that are intentional that I don't like then. That's that's what that comes down to. Um, the griffin feels very wide for the screen size, which, again, since he's not actually part of the hitbox, isn't a huge problem, but it's a deceptive. It plays like a little trick on your mind. It makes it difficult to play well, I find. Um, and I think my only other big gripe is that the ability to flip around flips your scrolling, which... I'm sure there's tactical uses for it, and there are people that would prefer it the way it is, but I would prefer it to not mess with my scrolling. There are, I guess you could call them corners, where you have to decide and the arrows come up. You've seen them where I have to pick left or right, or up or down, or left or down, or whatever. And I feel like that's enough that I don't need to change the scrolling every time I flip, because a lot of the times I would like to continue making progress while shooting the enemies behind me. Other than that, I kind of like Griffinite Epic. I'll probably keep playing it every once in a while. Um, hopefully I get better at it and can actually see how this boss weapon stuff works. It looks like it's just different... Um, I mean, different weapons. There was, I think, from what I could tell from one of the screenshots, there was a sword that you get. Uh, if I back out here there is... I can hit tab and see the profile of the character whose area I'm going to. I think you can unlock other characters and that they all ride something, is my guess, because here we have a guy riding a gorilla. Um, it doesn't say what weapon he took, does it? It says he's an archery champion, so my guess is he has a bow. Uh, if we... oops, I want to tab back out, go over to the other character who is riding a pegasus and has a sword. So I think you get a sword from him, uh, her, sorry, you get a sword from her and that maybe you can unlock the ability to play as other characters and they would ride, that's why they all ride animals. Um, at least the first to ride animals. Having not been able to get past a boss to show off more things. I can't really say a whole lot, but um, if you like shoot 'em ups, give it a shot. It seems like a great shoot 'em up. Um, if you're on the fence about shoot 'em ups, it's got difficulty selection, it's got some interesting mechanics to take a look at, and it's got the whole RPG thing, so it can kind of help you out there with upgrades and stuff. So definitely give it a shot. I'll have the link to the Steam page in the description. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.